Hey guys, great news. I have finally been able to download the new DaVinci Resolve 17.1 beta, which is fully optimized and supports the M1 MacBooks or the ARM architecture. And in this video, I'm gonna put this machine and the program through its paces with some BMPCC 6K B-RAW footage. So like we always do, let's jump straight into it. And what I will start with first of all is that I'm using a Samsung T5 SSD and that stores all of the footage on it. Now I think this is a relatively good real life use case for this test because unless you're some kind of Saudi Arabian prince who can afford to drop five grand on a two terabyte SSD version of the MacBook, you're gonna be stuck with the rest of us plebs using external SSDs or external hard drives if you're still in the 2010s. And what we're gonna do first of all is we're gonna go into Finder and we'll actually open up the T5 and we'll open up this footage. Now this is just some test footage downloaded from a website. I'll see if I can link it in the description if you guys wanna download it and have a go at it yourself. So if we just simply open this up and play it on Big Sur, we'll see how it performs. So you can see that loads almost straight away uh, using the Blackmagic RAW player. And then if we play this, absolutely no issues playing. And we can also pause, scrub, no issues, go full screen, scrub, absolutely no issues at all. So what we'll do now is we'll start up DaVinci Resolve, we'll import the footage and we'll have a look at it. Okay, so we'll make a new project. So let's call this BMPCC 6K test. And we're gonna to go to import off the T5, select all, drag them into the media pool. Now, if I click on one of these clips, you can actually see here in the metadata that this is Blackmagic RAW and it is 6K resolution as well. So I just thought I'd clear that up right off the bat. And if we now go onto the timeline, let's just uh, get a couple of these clips. We'll just import them all to begin with. And what I'll do is I'll click on one and then I'll come into the color tab and I'll come over here to the camera raw. And you can see that this is indeed raw footage. You can see there, you wouldn't have these options if it wasn't. So this is definitely 6K raw footage. So back to the timeline, let's check the resolution for the timeline. So we're in 1080, let's change this to 4K. And what we'll also do as well is we're gonna turn use optimized media off Gonna turn off use proxy media, and we're also going to turn off the render cache. So this is essentially just turning off all of the automatic functions in DaVinci Resolve. It's gonna let you play back and scrub a little bit, a little bit quicker. Okay, so here's a clip with some motion. Now again, 6K BMPCC uh, B raw footage playing in a 4K resolution. Let's see what it does. Okay, so it's definitely a bit jittery at the start, but after a second or two, it actually starts going quite smooth. So we'll swap to a different clip here. That's playing without any issues. There's no motion, but you can actually see that it is a video because there's raindrops coming down. All right, so it's about to go to a new video and that is playing totally fine. There's absolutely no issues there. So let's do some scrubbing. Absolutely no issues scrubbing there. A lot of motion in this clip. And we'll skip forward and play. Okay, so you can see up here, there's a little red button and also the FPS counter. That just means that it's stuttering a little bit. But again, like this is a entry level $999 MacBook Pro and this is 6K B-RAW footage. The fact that this is even playing in 4K is amazing. So let's keep playing this and scrubbing, just so you can see a little bit more of a test. Absolutely no issues scrubbing, that's very solid. Okay, and as you can see, again, the timeline resolution is full 4K. So let's drop some LUTs onto this footage and we'll see how it performs. Now, cool tip for you guys, if you want to install some LUTs, come down here to the project settings and then you wanna to come to color management and then if you click open LUT folder, you can literally just drag and drop LUTs inside here and they will load in DaVinci Resolve. So cool little tip for you all. 
Okay, so if we cancel that and let's let's select this clip. Let's drop a LUT onto it. Now I'm just using one of the free packs from, I think it was Daniel Schiffer, that's his name. He's just a YouTuber that makes videos, pretty cool guy. Um, so you can see that LUT has been installed. Let's do it on this one as well. We'll do a different LUT this time. We'll do this one and then Let's try this one as well. We'll add a lot onto here. Vintage look, Polaroid, there we go. Okay, so let's see if this plays. Now again, it's a shame that most of these clips don't have a huge amount of motion in them. So I'll try and stick to the ones that do have motion like this one. So you can see there, that looks absolutely amazing. I know you can't really see it in the camera, but from where I'm sitting, it looks great. It is playing, but there is a little bit of a delay. It is a bit choppy. And if we scrub this timeline, scrub's totally fine, no drop frame. Well, there's a, there's a couple drop frames here and there, but it's very, very smooth. But the playback is not quite as good as it was before. You probably still could edit like this, but it would be a little bit of a struggle, and I personally would not. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna go into Fusion. I'll leave that for its own separate video. I just wanted to do some light editing and some light LUT and color correction on this, just so you can see how it performs. But I also think that the tests I've done so far aren't super accurate. So for me personally, I wouldn't ever edit in a 4K resolution on this particular machine. Like I wouldn't have the preview in 4K or the timeline. I would actually have it set to 1080p because I don't actually think you really need a 4K monitor on this machine while you're editing, you can very much get away with 1080p. So if we change this to a 1080p resolution, which is here, and then we'll just wait a second or two. So if we come back here and we play this, that works almost perfectly. There's a very, very slight delay, but you can see here that's playing back in the full 24 FPS and that scrubs perfectly fine. And if we come back here to a clip that doesn't have any color correction, there's absolutely no issues there at all. It plays back totally fine. Scrubs between clips, absolutely no issues. And again, this is full 6K B-RAW footage. So the final test for me in the timeline is going to be adding on a few more LUTs onto these other clips. We'll try and put them on the ones that have motion. So let's add another LUT here, another vintage look one from Daniel Schiffer. And then this one, we'll put another one on there. Now this is how I would personally edit footage on this computer. Now before I show you, let me just preface and let me just try to make you guys understand that this kind of footage should not be edited on this computer at all. It should not be possible. You would need some kind of serious PC desktop or a much more expensive Mac to do any kind of editing or, or manipulation or color correction on this footage. Because again, it's 6K B raw footage. Like you should not be able to do this on a base model 999 MacBook Air. And like this isn't even plugged into power. There's nothing else hooked up to it. It's literally just off battery and off a T5 SSD. And this is completely usable. I would have absolutely no issues editing and rendering in this. Obviously, if you got too deep into the effects and the fusion and all that kind of thing, you'd probably struggle, but you're not really going to be doing that on a MacBook Air, right? You're going to pay a little bit extra and get the 16-inch M2 MacBook when that comes out a little bit later. So anyway, side note, I'll just get straight back into it and we'll change the timeline proxy media to half resolution. And we'll actually come here and change this to 4K again. Now, ideally, I would generally just keep this in 1080p, but for the purpose of this video, let's try 4K. So this is now half resolution. So this timeline is still in 4K, but it's only outputting in half the resolution when you play back and you scrub. So if we now play one of these color corrected clips, Just make sure this one has a color correction. 
absolutely no issues at all. So this is half resolution 4K playback and this machine is absolutely destroying it. And it is barely warm to touch. It's only been going for about 10 minutes, but it's just, I almost can't even tell that it's on. Now, if we were to do this for another half hour to two hours or so, it would definitely become warm, but not super hot. Again, I've mentioned that in my previous videos, these machines just do not seem to get super hot, whether that's because Apple's throttling them more or they just are very thermally efficient. I don't really know, but this is very, very impressive. Okay, so let's come to the final test and let's just have a look at what the rendering might look like. So let's just call this a test render and we're in 4K. So we'll change the codec to H265. I like to use QuickTime, it's a good codec. 24 FPS, add to render queue. And we're gonna save that onto my desktop. And we're going to render that. So that's doing very well with this footage. I mean, again, even the fact that this machine can play it at all is amazing. Most machines would just load this and then when you try to actually play it, it just wouldn't work or it would just crash. But this Mac Pro is just absolutely blazing through it. So what I'll do is I'll leave this to do its thing for a couple of minutes. Through the magic of editing, I'll speed it up. And then when it's finished rendering, I'll come back and I'll conclude the video. Okay, so that render has just finished. Now let's do a heat test. It's definitely much more warm than it was before, but again, like it is just not uncomfortable. Like I can rest my fingers on this and it's not crazy. Now, bear in mind, this has only been going for about four or five minutes. If you wanna see like a full hardcore render test, that's gonna be coming on my channel soon. Um, but that is just, it's actually cool over here as well. It's quite warm here but it's actually cooling down already. Like it's almost cool again after finishing that render. So that's very impressive. Now this was, let's have a look here, about a minute and a half of 6K footage. And as you can see that rendered in just over two and a half minutes. And that also had LUTs applied. So if we come into the desktop and we get some info on this, you can see there how big it is and the size, the time code, everything's successful there. And if we open this up, that looks absolutely amazing. And it is all fully color corrected as well. All right, so um, once again, <laughs> I'm very impressed with the performance of this machine. Again, like it's literally just sitting on a desk running off its battery. And I don't even remember the last time I charged it, honestly. I just charge it like every couple of days now. I've just lost track. I will do a battery test in the near future. But as you can see, it just absolutely destroys that footage. There's absolutely no issue. And if you just make a few slight tweaks in the timeline settings of your editing program, you can very much scrub and preload and preview all of this footage very, very easily. So that's it for this video, guys. Stay tuned for some more tests. I'm coming out with them as often as I can. Apart from that, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.